A network exists specifically to serve the connectivity requirements of the applications that ride on top of it. Now, these applications are there to serve the business needs. So these applications must run on stable networks and these stable networks must be built from stable routing protocols. So we know that a routing protocol is just a set of predefined rules that are used by routers that interconnect your network to maintain the communication between a source and a destination. So these routing protocols help you find the routes between the two nodes on the network. So we have Border Gateway Protocol, BGP, which is an example of a routing protocol. Now we've known BGP for decades for helping internet connected systems to find one another. However, these days we are seeing more of BGP inside of a single data center. So BGP is standards based and supported by many free and open source software packages. So BGP works with TCP port 179 and has all the inbuilt reliability that TCP offers. And it uses this to build neighbor relationships to learn our prefixes to advertise from another routing protocol. Now this would usually be OSPF or ISRS or even EIGRP. Now these routing protocols are called internal routing protocols because they control routing within an internal enterprise. So it's not surprising that people assume that BGP needs another routing protocol in the data center. However, it doesn't. In the data center, BGP is the internal routing protocol. And there's no additional routing protocol needed, which brings a lot of simplicity to design and to configuration and troubleshooting. A BGP configuration can be simple or it can be extremely complex. But in this small design of just two routers, I've just got a neighbor statement. And this allowed me to create, in my case, an eBGP peer relationship for the two BGP peers. So let's do a quick test. And I'm going to jump over to router one. I'm going to shut down the interface and I'm going to see what effect this has on my BGP network. And we can go over to the packet sniffer and we can see we're on an ethernet network. So we're running Ethernet, so Ethernet is involved with MAC addresses. Then we can move up the stack where we have IP addressing and we're running version four. And then we can see that BGP works over TCP port 179. So you may be thinking, why not use OSPF or even ISIS would have been the ideal choice for the routing protocol to power the data center. They're both designed for use within the enterprise and most enterprise networks are familiar with managing and designing these protocols. So why not move these into the data center? However, OSPF was really rejected by the web scale operators because of lack of multi protocol support. So what this means, OSPF requires two protocols for IPv4 and IPv6 networks. And then we have ISIS, which is far better regarded protocol that can route IPv4 and IPv6 stacks. However, there's only a few implementations and experience may be limited. Furthermore, many thought of the link state protocols needed to be more appropriate for a richly connected network, such as the close leaf and spine network. Link state protocols propagate link state changes to ever far flung routers and routers whose path state did not change due to changes. On the other hand, we had BGP that stepped into such situation and promised something that the two couldn't offer. Well, firstly, BGP is a mature routing protocol and actually powers the internet. And it's fundamentally simple to understand. And many mature and robust implementations of BGP exist. And more importantly, it's prevalent in the open source world. Also, it's less chatty than its link state routing protocols and it also supports multi-protocol. For example, it supports advertising IPv4, IPv6, multi-protocol label switching and VPNs natively. And we've seen even in my small BGP lab that we can make BGP work effectively in a data center with just one or two commands. So before we wrap up, I just want to go over one thing that popped into my mind when I looked at this initially. And this is, should we run internal BGP, which is IBGP, or external BGP, which is eBGP? Now, given that the entire network is under a single administrative domain, you would think that IBGP is an obvious choice. However, it's not. In the data center, eBGP is the most common deployment model. So the primary reason that people are choosing eBGP over IBGP is basically it's simpler to understand and deploy. 
IBGP can get a little bit complex, especially if you have root reflectors in the mix. So IBGP can be confusing in its best part selection algorithm, the rules by which roots are forwarded or not, and which prefix attributes are acted upon. So there are also limitations in IBGP multi-part support under certain conditions, precisely when two nodes advertise a root. Overcoming these limitations is obviously possible with additional configuration, but this additional configuration can lead to a lot of complexity and problems when you need to troubleshoot.